Hey guys, it's Avery and I, if you can't tell, I'm so overjoyed right now. I'm so overjoyed right now to be, I'm just like full of joy of the Lord today, guys. Just everything going to church this morning, I felt like the happiest person on the planet. I mean, maybe not the happiest person on the planet, but I don't know. I felt pretty happy um, and joyful. And <laughs> something that I've been experiencing lately is a peace and joy that comes from the Lord. And like, there's such a difference that you can feel within you when you are experiencing that kind of joy or peace. And I am so happy to be experiencing that today. And that is not the only reason I'm so overjoyed, but I'm so, so, so glad to be making a YouTube video right now. <sighs> okay, <laughs> so today's video, I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible, but it's most likely gonna be a very long video because I have a whole lot to say and I cannot wait and I just feel like God has been giving me so much to like pour into my YouTube channel and stuff right now. Let's just start with the fact. I did not fall off the face of the earth. I'm sure some of you thought I did because I've been gone for an entire month. And my last video I made was all about how like my new goals for the channel and uh, the foundation of the channel and all that. Well, yeah, and then I and I just didn't post anything. My hair is driving me crazy today. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it up. Anyways, um, and then I disappeared. And I'm so sorry about that. But the reason that happened is what this whole entire video is going to be about today. It's because I can safely say that I was in a very, rough spiritual valley and if you don't know what that means right now then you will understand what that means by the end of this video so stay tuned and just know i am so overjoyed to be doing this and i cannot wait i have a three page well two and a half page long outline for this video which is kind of long and i'm gonna try not to read it but like what i put down on there is from my heart and exactly what I want to share. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, so um, I did a little, not survey, but kind of survey. Um, and I asked, <laughs> and I did this only like 30 minutes ago, so I only have one response. Um, <laughs> but I asked a couple of people that I know to, um, tell me like how they would define a spiritual valley and then give me like one to three ways that they like go through make it through a spiritual valley i've only got one response from my small group leader but the way that she puts it i could probably spend 12 hours not maybe not 12 but i could spend a lot of time diving deeper into the response that she gave me um, and she herself even said, I will try to consolidate this as much as I can, but this is a lot longer than a three sentence answer. So, um, I'm going to read you guys what she said first, um, actually, because I think it puts, it's a perfect start to this and it perfectly describes a spirituality. Okay. And so the reason I haven't been posting is like I said, I didn't fall off the face of the planet. I didn't get COVID, nothing, nothing along those lines. But I have been, so at the end of the summer, from like the end of June, all the way up till when school started, which was like August 16th, I believe, was my first day of school. I was going through a really tough spiritual valley. Part of it was just the stress of school coming up and I was super, anxious and overwhelmed by that and um just so much going on in my life and i was so busy 
and I wasn't giving God enough of my time and also because I realized and I've been learning a lot of things lately that have been affecting my faith in a way and um, I'll share this with you guys in just a minute but they've just really impacted a lot of things I've had a lot of thoughts I've had lots of tests and not like school tests but like tests of my faith let me read how she defines a spiritual val valley real quick for you guys and then we will continue on with what I have planned for this video so she says it's Spiritual valley is a dry and barren time in your journey with Jesus. It is where you feel alone or that Jesus is testing you, so it feels like he's withholding his presence or his voice from you. First, you must realize that you have to go through the valley to get to the mountaintops. I could spend so long on just that sentence right there. Psalms 23.4 says, and I'm going to use this, video, this first later on in the video, but she also happened to use it. In her text to me even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death god is saying that we walk through the valley we don't die in it the verse continues i fear no evil for you are with me even through our valleys even though our valleys are hard we know that he is with us and we will pass through them the only thing you can do to get out of the valley is to not stop walking through it. You have to remind yourself daily, sometimes hourly to trust him, sometimes minutely too. I added that part, she didn't say that. To trust him in and through the valley. Continue leaning into him as you're walking through it by praying constantly and meditating on his promises. This will help you get through any valley, no matter how dark and hard it is. Once you get to the mountaintop, you'll look back and be grateful for what you learned in the valley. So, that's good stuff right there. What she's saying at the end there about you'll be glad you went through it when you look at it from the mountaintop. Um, I'm going to make a video on my testimony very, very soon. And I go, I'm going to go pretty in depth about um, that, like looking at your trials from mountaintop view because it makes your trials look way more beautiful than in the pit of it and this is kind of a random thought but it wasn't gonna I didn't, I didn't have planned to say this but imagine yourself as a painting and God is the artist when you look super up close at a painting it has all those streaks and creases and like not perfect all put together it has colors blended and so when you zoom in on your life it might seem hard but when you take the big picture it's so so beautiful when you put it all together so you have to have those trials to have the mountaintops and to have that beautiful picture but i don't want to go too much off on a tangent of that but anyways, I said I've been learning some things, and as you all know, we're always learning. But some of these things that I've been learning have been, um, Satan has been using to try to make me doubt and um, lack in faith. And so I'm just gonna list like three of these things that I've been learning, um, and I still need to dig deeper into these things and read for myself in the Bible and find out what God's word says about them and um, seek advice from wise Christian people that I know about all this. But um, first thing is we should not base our relationship with God on feelings. I'm still learning this one. I'm still learning all of these pretty much. But um, I'm definitely like a feelings person, an emotions person, so I'm, you, got, you can't base it all on feelings. When you're like crying during worship and you feel so happy or whatever, that's not what you can base your relationship with God on. You have to base it on His truth and faith. Um, and then the next one, the next thing is God created us for His glory. He didn't create us so that He could be our slave. 
So many Christians today will focus on God's force and like all this is so true. Sorry, the dog's crying in the background. But like all they'll focus on is God is for us. He's gonna help us through everything. And I'm a Christian, so I just sit back and ask God to do what I want him to and it'll happen. No, the dog is being loud. Um, that, while that is true that God is for us and stuff like that, it is not the only reason that we were created and why God, what God is there for. God is, God's purpose in creating us was so that we could give him glory. And so we really have to make sure we're humbling ourselves and not just asking all the time, God, please this, God, please that. God, do this, God, do that. You have to humble yourself and just, wow, God, you are so good and thank him for things and um, just focus on how great he is and not all that he's supposed to, supposed to do for you. Um, there's a bug. Ew, I just killed it on my hand. I'll be right back. See that? That's nasty. Well, that was great. I just killed a bug. Like that. All right, y'all. So, um, and also with what I was saying about how we we're created for God's glory, not him creating to be our, he didn't create us to be for him to be our slave. Yeah, go back and listen to what I said before if that didn't make sense. Um, is a lot of worship music also focuses on that. There's so much I, I this, um, I that, I want, God, you are so good to me. Well, I guess that is, yeah. Anyways, a lot of worship music focuses on the side of God is only created to be our servant and not enough focused on God, you are so good and God, you are faithful and focused on all the things how great God is and us giving him glory rather than him serving us. Um, and then finally something, finally the last thing is feeling like I know, what I know about God is just common knowledge. Um, therefore making it seem a lot less powerful. So when I'm reading my Bible and it's like, God, uh, Jesus walks on water. I'm, because, which I'll explain more of this in my testimony video, but because I was raised in a Christian, Christian home and church on Sunday and Wednesday and any other time we can make it there and the doors are open being raised like that it makes you think when someone says are you reading your Bible God walked or Jesus walked on water you're like yeah duh Jesus walks on water it's Jesus like common knowledge you guys like what's so mind-blowing but really you have to humble yourself and t notice like God that is so great. Like, that is so much power in the name of Jesus. And it's just amazing. And when you're raised from day one of your life, being taught stuff like that, you don't see it as amazing as it truly is. And so sometimes you just gotta forget all those things you're taught in Veggie Tales and really wonder about the power or wonder at the power and amazingness of God. Amazing. This is a new word now. Um, so those were some of the things that I've been learning and some of the feelings that I've been struggling with and just like what's really brought me down and kind of caused me to fall into the spiritual valley is I've felt far from God and I'll go into that a little bit more in a minute when I talk about tests, but um, spiritual laziness. Um, sometimes, you guys, it is not easy to just sit down and read your Bible. This book right here does not make 100% sense at all, ever. 
if we're being completely honest, okay? So, it's not the easiest thing to read. I'd much rather read my Christian romance novels, which I will be doing a book review on very soon. I'd much rather read my Christian romance novels than um, a book about how we're horrible, sinful people and just doesn't always make sense. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love the Bible. And one of my prayers recently is God give me a strong desire to love your word more and more. But it can be hard, so spiritually lazy. Also, sometimes I feel like I'm just going through the motions. Like, like I said, I was raised in a Christian home. And so you pray at dinner time, you pray at bedtime, read your Bible, like, that's just what you do. And sometimes it's hard to not um, just go through the motions. So that's something that I've had to learn to like just worship God with my life and not just go through the motions of what makes me a good Christian. Another thing is school's already started, but when I started writing the outline for this video, school had not started. And so a lot I had the most anxiety I've ever felt over school this the, before the school year started. And God used the first day of school this year in amazing ways and I will probably make another video on that soon. But um, it was, I was stressed. Like I would just break down crying at the thought of school. Um, and when we still had like three weeks of summer left, just because I was so overwhelmed and I had to really forcefully give that anxiety over to God because it was stressing me out. Okay, let's just be honest. Um, it's been fun. There's been a lot going on and I still have so much going on, but something that I'm learning is that you have to choose to have joy through the trials and, um, follow God no matter how hard it is and so I still have stuff going on but now that I'm choosing to do that it makes it so much easier to sit down and have the joy of the Lord to make a YouTube video or just to go through daily life but I'll go into more detail in later videos I'm telling you this is my notebook for YouTube stuff I have two pages full of videos that I want to make as soon as I can but I still have so much going on in my life and they are going to make great testimonies of what God can do in and through you. Um, but we just got to keep working through those and, see, and I just got to keep seeking God through those and then I'll make a great video about them for you guys. Another thing that's been hard and brought me into the spiritual valley is having doubts about God because of the things I've learned recently. Like just about what I said with worship music, how so much of it is about like God being for us and God gives us strength and not God, you are so good. Um, it's caused me to have some doubts. It's just testing of faith, really. Um, and so when I'm in a spiritual valley, I tend to let all those things pile up in my heart and literally one little thing will push me over the edge and then it's just no good, not good sailing from there. Um, so that is kind of like where I've been at and the update <laughs> um, and just explaining what a spiritual valley is. And now I want to um, share some things that helps me during these tough times, how to not let valleys overtake you. Then I have a couple more things to say and then we'll be done. This is gonna be a really long video, I'm sorry. But now, um, let me share just some things that help me through these hard times. So, um, Psalms 23:4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And that's, go read Psalms 23, it's so good. I'm not gonna quote the whole thing right now. Um, but even though I walk through, okay, my small group leader already 
kind of mentioned this in the message that I wrote to you guys, but walk through. You know, you're not in like what you are in when you go through, but like you don't stay there. You walk through it. Okay, that is so encouraging. And ah, I don't know what these hand motions are, but it's working for me. So it is so encouraging that we walk through the valley and we're not stuck there. It gives me so much peace to know that God is with me. It says in Psalms 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, hold up, I don't wanna quote it wrong. That would be bad. Even though I walk through the, through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. That is so encouraging. That God is walking through the valley with you and you don't have to do it all on your own. That gives me so much peace. And I that was kind of a little um crazy tangent. Dog. Shh. Um But I just really wanted to make sure I emphasized on that. Alright, now things that help me get through these tough times. Worship music all the time. While I'm doing school, I listen to worship music. While I'm getting ready, listen to worship music. While I'm laying on the bed, crying, listen to worship music. All the time. And I like other music. I made a video about music that I like, especially Christian music. But um, I like country music, if you did not know that. I have country music that I like to listen to. But when I'm in the deepest, like, darkest part of these spiritual valleys, if I listen to that, it only gets me down because I need the truth of Jesus being poured over me continuously. So if you're in a spiritual valley, worship music all the time. All right, um, next is taking some time to de-stress, relax, and step back from life by either journaling, de-stressing, cleaning up your areas, so if my room is a mess, I'm automatically in not as good of a mood as if I would be when my room is clean. That made no sense. I'm in a better mood when my room is clean. Um, so it really helps me to continuously make sure my room is organized and clean when I'm in a spiritual valley or else that could be one of the things that pushes me over the edge. To watercolor scripture or faith quotes, um, uh, yeah, my notebook's not right here, but um, I've made some videos or I am going to make some videos about that and I've showed you guys some things that I've done before. Just like turning on worship music and doing a craft like watercoloring or hand lettering, um, scripture or faith quotes is kind of my favorite therapy. So then not letting these valleys overtake you. The same things as above do those same things, but one thing you really have to do is force yourself to continuously stay in the Word. Like I said, it will be hard. It is hard. But the more you force yourself to do it, the better it'll be in the long run. Because you're in a habit of saying the Word and praying continuously, it will be harder to drop it later once you're in a habit um and i'm not like the best person to be telling you this because i'm still practicing this practicing this myself but aren't we all so i let's just do it together you guys let's practice continuously being in the word even when it's hard even when we're in a valley because we will go through it but we're not going to get through it very quickly if we're just trying to fix it all on our own and not giving it to God. Repeating truth to myself. This, this is truth, okay? Truth, right here. Memorize it. I am doing a lot of scripture memorization. A video that I posted before I got into the spirit, or not posted, a video that I filmed before I got into the spiritual valley um, is about Bible verses that I hung up all over my room. Uh, and I'm doing that to make sure I'm keeping the truth going through my head all the time. Um, and 
I'm also doing something with my family well, where we have a different verse every day of the week except for Sunday that we're working on to memorize. Um, and this might also be another video sometime in the future, but I'm just gonna sum it up in one sentence right now. Life is short, and if all we have is Jesus, that's good enough. So, spend time with him and memorize scripture. Let's do it together. I've already mentioned this a couple of times, but I have a Bible verse for it and um, a couple more things to say about it. We have to choose Christ. Yes, it's a choice, or we have to choose, and yes, it's a choice to have joy during these hard times. Sometimes making that choice is not easy. Sometimes I'd rather lay on my bed and cry than get up or just go to sleep after a long day rather than reading my Bible. It's not easy, but it's a battle between flesh and spirit. My flesh wants to go to bed because I had a hard day, hard long day. My spirit knows that I need time with Jesus. But when you choose to obey, it turns out to be so much better. Choose to live for Jesus. Life is short, live for Jesus. And I have a passage from James 1 that I want to read relating to this. And it says, mm, um, this is James 1, 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And then also, you should read old James 1. I'm working my way through it right now. You can see my highlighting. Um, but also verse 12, James 1, 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So, I want to strive to, even in the hard valley, to force myself to spend time with God and because I know I will always benefit from that time. A lot of times recently when I really just haven't wanted to read my Bible and I make myself do it, I've gotten so, so much out of it. And it's part of why I have two whole pages of video ideas. Yeah, so it dawned on me recently that I'm going through a testing of my faith right now. That is what a spiritual valley is. And it's why I have to decide to choose Christ. If faith is what I let fail during this valley and hardship in life, what do I have left? Nothing. Because nothing other than Jesus can truly carry us through and help us. So even when it's hard and feels forced, choose Christ. If I have not said it enough in this video, choose Christ. And I'm watching the time. I know this video is probably going to be close to an hour. But if you've made it to this point, like this video or comment. I'm still not done, just FYI. <laughs> like this video or comment and so I know we're in this together I want this is also another side tangent I want this channel to be a community where Christians can come together and support one another and have each other's back and learn together because like I said we're all learning and especially this one right here so um and then this is a quote that I saw recently that's so well related to this video. And it says, the teacher is always silent during a test. And part of what's been so hard, and I mentioned this about like not feeling close to God, it's because one, you can't base a relationship with God on feelings. Two, the teacher is always silent during the test. You're not gonna, it might be harder sometimes when you're going through a testing of your faith to persevere because you're not constantly feeling that reassurance from God that like everything's gonna be okay. But that's trust, that's faith. We have to trust by having faith in him that everything's gonna be all right, even when we're in the test and that is why we persevere so 
if you can't tell, I've been doing better because I've been practicing surrendering this, all this to God and it's helping so much. We can't l expect to live life without values. It's not we surrender our life to Christ, we do the ABCs and it's all a cakewalk from there. That's not how it works, guys. I hate to break it to you. We will have trials, but guess what? Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So even when it's hard, God will never leave us alone in these valleys. I think that's all I have to say for this video. Let's be each other's prayer warriors. So in my last video, I asked you to pray for me with all the things with the channel. Um, let's continue to do that. I will be praying for you guys. And one verse that I put at the end of this video outline is Matthew 20, 20, um, the second part of the verse. And it says, Behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So I want to leave you guys on that. Even though you go through the alley, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So um not me as in eyes and me but as in jesus so um i'm gonna leave some worship music suggestions in the description box below um and i hope you guys really enjoyed this video i might put the video outline in the description below because it has most of the summarization of this whole entire video Anyways, like I said, if you made it this far in the video, please comment, like, and you ha if you haven't, subscribe. Um, we would love for you to join the CCC fam. Oh my goodness. I think I was so excited at the start of this video, I didn't even say my name and the name of the channel. Anyways, hey guys, welcome to Christ Coffee and Crafts. I'm Avery, and today's video will be about spiritual valleys. And I really hope you made it this far in the video, because, um... I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning. So, <laughs> anyways, um, I love you guys and let's get through these spiritual valleys together because we will get through them and God will be with you till the end of the age. Go be a light for Jesus. Bye guys.